Welcome to the Prepare Like a Pro live chat show. My name is Chat McLean. I am the host. And on this episode, I will be debriefing last week's live chat with Kevin Ball, a sports scientist and a kicking kinematic specialist. I was lucky enough to be lectured by Kev, as well as worked alongside him with a strength and conditioning and, and a kicking development program at Advanced High Performance under Wayne Oswald. I'll also be announcing this week's upcoming podcast on the Tuesday. We have an interview episode. On Wednesday, we have our Get Better plan. And then Friday, another interview-based episode uh, announcing this week's live guest and, of course, our power tip for this week after I go on Instagram and answer all your questions. So let's dive straight into it. Firstly, with the upcoming week, we have uh, one of our interns, Nicholas Raw. His episode will be released in the podcast world on Tuesday. We discussed his journey in strength and conditioning, how he started in personal training, and then uh, really enjoyed the clinical side. So decided to do his master's in exercise physiologist, although it didn't come easy for him. Took a little um, while to, to pursue and persist with getting into his master's course, but he got there and thoroughly enjoyed it and how much he's also loving working in the high performance world by working, looking after the Corfu Grammarian Strength and Conditioning Program. So he loves that balance between the clinic as a full-time um, exercise scientist currently at Kaiser. And then after his qualifications come through, he'll then progress into a exercise physiologist there and also working with athletes um, at a high level, Corfu Grammarian's men's programs in the VAFA Victorian Amateurs uh, Football League in the A grade. So some serious athletes there and, and a great program for Nick to be involved. And from all reports, he's doing a great job um, speaking to the athletes and, and coaching staff. So really enjoyed interviewing Nick and sharing his story. And make sure on Tuesday to listen in. If you have any questions or queries, feel free to hit us up. On Wednesday this week, our Get Better plan will be all things on for the athletes to help you prepare for a successful 2022 season. Hopefully it's your best one yet and you hit all your goals and, and much, much more. So talking about around our philosophy um, and some of the takeaways that we did more recently where I presented like I do every Sunday at five o'clock with our athletes um, on Zoom so we can speak to the ones that are following our program all around the country as well as the three different tiers we offer our Canopy members, our online um, athletes that are following the program and the individualised coaching package athletes that we see face to face. So it's a good touch point and uh, another opportunity to present and, and educate as well as connect with all the members and, and answer any questions. So. Uh, some of that content has then turned into our Get Better Plan Wednesday podcast to be able to share with podcast listeners. And uh, we're really looking forward to this episode. Hopefully you guys get something out of it. Our Friday episode will be with Jackie Lauder. She is the sports psychologist at the Collingwood Football Club. And, um, yeah, this was a awesome episode for those wanting to work on your mental game. Jackie did not hold back at all. She talked about her passion um, for high performance and how it started at a very young age, watching her sister in the hurdles competing at a high level. She knew she really thoroughly enjoyed um, the, the whole mental game and understanding how an athlete's prepared mentally for that uh, high performance environment and competition, as well as developing uh, skills and tools to be able to help athletes uh, handle those high pressure environments. So um, whether you're a coach, uh, or an athlete, you'll definitely get something out of this. It's one of my uh, favourite episodes, so make sure to tune in on Friday to listen to Jackie's story, her career journey, as well as some um, key takeaways to help developing footballers improve their mental game and some of the stories and experiences that she's experienced working at the highest level. We have uh, also a different... We've got two live events uh, this week. We have uh, one that's a little on the different side. I won't be the host. I'll be the guest for uh, on the Marcus Cope podcast. So uh, super uh, grateful for the opportunity to be on the uh, guest side. Um, really looking forward to catching up with Marcus on his podcast, and that will be on Thursday. As soon as I find out when that episode's live, I'll, I'll no doubt share it on our socials, and we'll be discussing my journey in the, in the fitness industry, 
um, as well as some things around um, business development and then also from football development and some philosophies that uh, we work on at Prepare Like a Pro. So if you're interested to learn more, head over to the uh, Marcus Cope podcast. That, that will be a live interview on Thursday and then the release date is to be confirmed. In terms of our podcast, we have Will Hams, who is the founder of Liminal Wellbeing, which is a mental um, wellness uh, service that's looking to work with schools, currently working with schools. It's in its better stage. Um, so it's just testing out some things to, to make it the best product it could possibly be. But it'll also be working with uh, football clubs and uh, developing athletes in the school space and helping teachers and strength and conditioning coaches, sports psychologists uh, filter the relevant information. Um, and it's an amazing software. So really looking forward to learning more information with Will. I was lucky enough to work with him at the Box Hill Hawks. He's a star player. Um, he was also a former uh, professional footballer at the Essen Football Club. Um, so really looking forward to sharing his story as a footballer as well as uh, now as an entrepreneur. So tune in for that one. That will be this Thursday, the 20th of January, 2022 at 8.30 p.m., of course, on our YouTube channel. So make sure to subscribe and like that episode if you tune in. And if you have any questions or queries and you can't make it, uh, feel free to direct message us on Instagram or any of our socials and I'll do my best to fit that uh, question in the uh, podcast. That's it for announcing the upcoming uh talks so just a review nicholas rule our intern for the coffee comedians that'll be on tuesday we have uh preparation for how to prepare for your best season yet for the 2022 season as our get better plan episode on wednesday and then jackie lauder the sports psychologist Connor football club on friday in terms of a debrief of last week's episode with kevin ball our live interview on youtube this was a fantastic chat and uh, it was super engaging i think it went for around 90 minutes uh, but it felt like 30 minutes kevin's a, an expert he's got a huge amount of experience working across afl multiple teams rugby multiple teams at the highest level uh consulting individual high performing athletes in all uh, in, a, in all sorts of different sports um, lecturing at victoria university um so it was, it was really really good to speak to someone who's also been in a unique role as well um where he was a full-time at Fremantle dockers under chris conley as a strength and conditioning coach as well as an assistant coach so he talked about uh, how um how effective that was that role because you could really develop the relationship side of things with the athletes on the gym floor and then you could develop their bodies to be able to improve their kicking performance as well as other areas of the performance but in the importance of developing glute and core strength from a balance point of view uh, and then hip flexibility both in internal external rotation but also for to be able to get quality hip extension so the analogy you talked about like a back swing uh, if you've got short tight hips you won't have as much of a back swing motion um, as someone who is flexible through that, through that area so making sure that they're um, doing their flexibility work through the hips and the importance also as a as a as a stiff foot i uh, talked about the degree margin of error was far greater with someone with a sloppy foot as they kicked um even if they got the timing right uh wrong sorry if the for, on a stiff foot the margin error might only be five degrees whereas with a sloppy foot it could be up to 20. so um, the importance of stiff foot which is really interesting because that's that's a huge area of focus from an athlete development point of view for footballers for their acceleration and ability to um, cut, jump, um, and also be efficient across the ground to reduce fatigue. So um, it also improves kicking performance, which is really, really good to know. You talked about uh, cross, um, I just had a mental break there, so doing contrast training, sorry, with skill acquisition. So doing a heavy lift and then more commonly in transition, you'd do like a power-based plyometric movement, like a, a counter movement jump, let's say, where he would throw in a power kick, like a punch kick, or a um, kick into a big boxing bag. Uh, and the louder the noise, the sweeter the timing. Uh, and that was good feedback for the athletes to, to get that contact uh, and make that noise into the bag. So he talked about how important that was where you're getting that, um, you're getting the central nervous system, the muscles are excited from the heavy lifting. 
So using that effect, that post-activation potentiation effect into then transferring it into some kicking work and kicking development for, for power, um, which is not something I've heard of before, but makes a lot of sense. So um, definitely that's just small little takeaways um, that are top of mind, but definitely listen in to that one. You can watch it on the YouTube channel, listen to the whole episode, uh, and we will release the podcast episode in the coming weeks. Okay, let's live stream over to Instagram now to answer your questions. We had two sent through. So for those new to the podcast, every Sunday I tune in on Instagram. G'day, Instagram world. I'm going to be answering your questions shortly in a second. Going to kick off firstly with our um, two questions that were sent in by email from our podcast listeners. The first one, Darcy. Uh, and, of course, if you're tuning into Instagram, live and you've got any questions g'day tom taj mckenzie and kessie feel free to send through your questions i'll do my best to answer them the first one's darcy he's written how can i improve my mobility i stretch three times per week without much improvement uh, great question darcy um, without knowing what type of flexibility program you're following i would i've got good success with working with footballers um, with not just doing static stretching but also doing some dynamic work before doing some lifting in the gym so to, so think of like short holds so to, to to help mobilize your body before you lift and then you can use that range of motion in your lifting sessions as well as on the field so dynamic warm-ups are really important before your field and gym session so you're using that range and particularly on the field where we're moving at high speed and also in the gym you're getting a stronger stimulus, so your body's going to hold on to that um, work a lot greater than just doing flexibility work. Then from there, tissue health, so making sure you're doing some release work, so getting a massage from a professional, um, make sure you're doing your own tissue work, so you can use a little cross ball in the big areas like your hips, uh, around your scapula, your upper back, um, and maybe your neck, so any areas that you've got some tension, so looking after your muscles, uh, is really really important to be able to access those ranges and that will really really help cheers geordie thanks mate uh if you tuned in as well guys feel free to send through any questions and i'll do my best to answer them any problems you're having with your athlete development shoot them through and hopefully i can help you out uh, but yeah darcy so mobility make sure you mobilize just all it takes is five minutes really dedicated work we've got a whole playlist of mobility exercises on our youtube channel that you can check out um, that is specific to football then some tissue work, so make sure you're getting a massage at least fortnightly. Uh, if, you, if you're playing a fair bit of footy at the moment, that would be a minimum. And then uh, doing your own mobility work as well, uh, some, your own tissue work as well, so the cross ball, foam rolling, and that should be relatively uncomfortable if it's, if it, if it's, uh, if it's not re really strong through there. Like you shouldn't be grimacing and in extreme amount of pain, but we do want to make sure we're, we're getting a fair bit of work through those tissues by um making it strenuous so make sure that you're working and particularly with muscles lower than the heart um pre put pressure on the muscles rolling up towards the heart just to help your blood flow um and help your body um get those waste products out so help your recovery which will help your mobility and then when you do your flexibility work try doing it when you're warm so after a shower or after a workout when you've done you've done the strength session or you've done the field session that would be a good time to stretch because your muscles are going to be nice and warm and ready for um to, to be able to stretch them to their limits and improve your, your flexibility um pnf stretching which can be a really really effective way so doing some partner work or some resisted work would be a great way to uh, help improve your, your flexibility and that's a stronger stimulus like i said before we want to make sure we're using the range um, so uh, hopefully those tips help you, Darcy. Uh, if you have any more questions or queries, feel free to reach out and I'll do my best to answer them. Jordan's written through, I play footy. I want to be able to run quick, but I also want to pack on some muscle. I'm 6 foot 2 and 80 kilos. Yeah, great question, Jordan. I would say, yeah, that you can, I've definitely seen people do all three of those things. So be able to run at pace, um, pack on some muscle um, while playing footy. What you want to try and make sure is number one, your sleep is is quality to be able to handle the, the aerobic work that you're doing, the long vo distance volume sessions you're doing with your footy. Then you want to make sure, uh, because you're also doing some speed-based work to be able to run fast, sleep's really important to help your recovery, and then to pack on the muscle with the work that you're doing in the gym. So they're all three 
highly stressful things to, to put on the body. So we want to make sure that we're working in um, with the body to be able to handle that stress. So sleep is number one. Second to that, to particularly if you, if you go, if you want to improve your performance with, with running fast, nutrition, so you're fueling your speed-based sessions um, is really, really important. So make sure you're getting some carbohydrates like a smoothie um, with some berries uh, leading into uh, your session. So you've got some carbohydrates to, to burn and you've got some good energy going into that session, which will help the quality and the intensity. Uh, and then in terms of putting on some muscle, protein is really, really important as well as make sure you're getting in plenty of calories. Um, so football is a highly um, demanding stress on the body and it's quite catabolic if you're not fueling really well and you're disciplined and well prepared with your food. And what we want to try and do to gain muscle is be in an anabolic environment. Um, so we want to have a surplus of calories uh, of calories that are going in compared to how many calories you're burning out. So you want to make sure you have more going in than going out to be able to help your body build muscle. But great question, Jordy. Next one, this one was sent through from one of our podcasters. Bob, I want my daughter and son to start athlete development to uh, training at home. What should I buy? Great question. Without knowing their age, um, it is a little bit tricky, but I would say start off with bang for buck, Bob, would be some dumbbells, so pair of fives, pair of tens, pair of fifteens would be um, great for uh, youth development. Um, if they're seniors, then they're probably buying their own stuff. <laughs> nah, I would say any 22, 25 kilo dumbbells um, would be a start. Then you got your mini bands. Iron Edge's got a great range of, of mini bands that you can buy. Power bands, same company. Iron Edge have got a great range of power bands, and you can do all your core based work, rotational power work, uh, and a lot of hip, hip stability, core stability, which is going to help everything from balance, strength, um, as well as your ability to kick well, um, your acceleration, um, and your power. So band work is really, really important. Um, that would be the best place to start. If it's a long-term investment, then you could buy a squat rack, where that way you'll be able to do your squats from it with, with the barbell, of course. Um, you'll be able to use your your um, squat rack potentially if it if it just for RDLs, rack pulls, um, bench pressing, overhead pressing. Um, so there's a whole range of different exercises that you could do with that. So squat rack would be a good foundation if you're wanting to spend around ten grand because you've got the the weight plates are very expensive and the barbell is quite expensive as well as the squat rack piece. But yeah, start with the dumbbells. Bands would be the best place to start for your son and daughter. And if you have any more questions, feel free to reach out. Jordan's follow. If I go into surplus, will I get fat because I want to look good too? Uh, no, you shouldn't. If you're eating real food and it's um, from high quality um, produce, then you definitely shouldn't just suddenly put on all this weight. Typically, footballers are running three times a week um, at the age that you're at as well. You should be burning a lot of energy at the moment. So as long as you eat healthy, You'll be fueling your training. Your energy should improve. Your recovery should improve, and you should get better results out of your training, um, and therefore look more athletic too. So the, the body will will adapt uh, because your training intensity will be higher because you're fuel, fueling your body better. Um, so as long as the the quality of your food is good, then you shouldn't put on excess fat with the amount of work that you would be doing as a footballer. All right, going over to our power tip now, guys. So facing to the YouTube podcasting world now, uh, Instagram is you can feel free to hang around. If you've got any questions, shoot them through and I'll, I'll answer them after our power tip. Power tip this week is going to be revolved around acceleration and it's something that um, more commonly we can get excited by speed and top end speed when I talk about sprinting compared to acceleration. So acceleration is a short distance. So think about like your first three steps where sprinting is the ability to run at top speed. As a footballer, and by looking at GPS data, typically you'll be lucky to get on a given week, uh, most footballers would hit about 90% of their max speed. Okay, so it doesn't, you don't really hit 100% of max velocity like a track and field athlete might on a regular basis. Wingers, may get a little bit more regular. They might hit 95%, but typically the other positions will hit 88 to 90, 90% of their max velocity, and that might only be once or twice throughout a game. Whereas with accelerations, you could be getting anywhere between 25 to 40 accelerations a game. Uh, and obviously the ability to be able to get to speed fast over short distances, faster than your opponent, 
is super advantageous because you'll either be able to stick the tackle rather than them getting away or you'll get the ball and obviously if we get the ball we're dictating terms and the other team's working harder so that's that's the goal so acceleration is critical it's really really important and areas that are uh, in my mind, since working with footballs for a number of years now, that are undervalued are mobility. So I touched on that before on the podcast, but making sure that your ankles, so you can get your knee over your toe with your flat foot, we call that the knee to wall test. You can do that comfortably with no pain or friction through your ankle joint. So you're getting good range and good amount of use of the lower limb, uh, mainly around the Achilles, which is uh, that thick tendon on the back of the ankle. And it has a lot of potential for generating uh, power your hips are really mobile so you're able to get good hip extension and hip flexion to be able to get that uh, force production into the ground and push into the ground vertically as well as dr drag and, and, and generate force horizontally so we can move forward fast uh, particularly in our acceleration you're going to be spending more time on the ground per strike so making sure we've got good ranges in that dorsiflexion uh, position through the ankle and the hips is critical to be able to generate a lot of force um, so mobility is key. Strength is also really, really important, um, more so in acceleration than top end speed. Top end speed is more velocity based. Acceleration is because you're spending a bit more time on the ground per foot strike, particularly in those first three steps than you would be when you're moving at max, max velocity. Strength is more, more important. So want to make sure that um, we're getting strong in the gym. Think of that as your ceiling of your, of your first three steps. So the stronger you are, the higher the potential for your acceleration to improve. So making sure that you're lifting heavy in the squat pattern at least once a week, uh, as well as the deadlift pattern, whether that be an RDL, a rack pull, or trap bar deadlift, for example. Hopefully this power tip helps. Uh, if you have any questions or queries, feel free to reach us. We do have a speed and power program specifically designed for someone that wants this. You might have the combine or you just want to improve your power, your first three steps. So head over to our website, propellacapro.com, to check out that program. Looks like we had a couple of Instagrammers send through some questions, so I'll wrap it up, and then we're done for this week's episode. Mitch Larson, what do, what do you believe is the best way to merge lower body strength prehab with PM footy training before training or a non-train day as post-training gym session is an option? Yeah, tough one, Mitch. Oh, I typically like to do the lower body weights after the football session. So you do your field session, you do your conditioning, and then you do your weights last. If that means um, you've got access to a gym close to the, your football ground, then that works really well. If that's not possible, because it's by the time you leave the footy field and there's no gym next to the ground, it's 8.30 at night, and you're better off fueling the body, recovering, unwinding, getting good sleep before the next day. Then, yeah, lower body session, uh, the morning, obviously, getting good recovery, um, you know, hours of recovery before your field session. So you're still um, going to have that speed and that power that we want for your agility and your acceleration uh, and jumping and so forth. So uh, hopefully that helps. Worst, worst case scenario, like I said, you could do it as a bit of a primer before the field session. Um, and number one, listen to your body, whatever feels best and you can stick to for a routine will reap the best results. The body loves routine. Um, what we know with uh, preventable injuries is that it's a spike in load. So for your hammies and your calves and Achilles-based injury, uh, tendon-based injuries, we don't want to be uh, changing the routine too much. We try and build consistency. So pick something in pre-season that works for you and it is sustainable and it's usually going to get good benefits from that. Hopefully that helps, Mitch. Mackenzie Thompson, I do it on non-train days only because before training I'm too fatigued to train in the capacity I'm expected to. There you go. So find what works for you. Mackenzie's found. So, yeah, try it out, Mitch. Let us know what you think, mate. Lastly, guys, we had an awesome interview by the AFL People podcast. They wrote great listen, great people, and great podcast. I would recommend 100% for anyone who isn't already listening to it to start listening. It's a great insight, only not only to how to prepare like a pro, but also to learn off high performance guests like coaches, players, and practitioners. Love the podcast. I can't wait for more. Thank you so much for the review. Uh, this helps us a lot, not only in um, 
what what you guys are enjoying uh, out of the podcast by getting some feedback, but also to reach more more listeners. So if you are listening in the podcast world and you have the opportunity to review us on iTunes, that would be massively appreciative, as well as Spotify now has a rating system. So it's not a review. You don't have to write anything, but you can give us a star rating, which would be uh, much appreciated also. I'll see you guys on the next episode. Thank you for tuning in. If you're interested in our High Performance Sunday 5 p.m. presentations that I do with all the athletes, the easiest way to access that is to become an Academy member. You can do that for less than $5 a week. You'll also receive an ad-free podcast. You get a one-on-one Zoom session with myself. If you're a strength edition coach, we talk about your career goals. If you're an athlete, we talk about some goal setting and what you want to get out of this year and how you can improve your lifestyle to um, help your athlete development. So you get that as a complimentary as soon as you join. And like I mentioned before, it's less than $5 a week. So if you're interested in the Academy podcast, head over to Prepare Like a Pro and check out the uh, .com and check out the Academy page. I'll see you guys on the next episode. Cheers.